All right, so I've discussed in so many different videos and streams and just, you know, even some of my political and, and social, let's say, speaking engagements. I've discussed how when it comes to the music industry, it's pretty much, it's not even a lean. The vast majority of the individuals within it, they are leftists and they spew mainstream leftism talking points. There's no diversity in thought, certainly in that regard. Pretty much everybody is on that side. It's not even a secret. You find any blue check mark, post hardcore, metalcore artists, which is what I'm going to be specifically focusing on here. Um, those guys tend to be leftists. And why, why I'm singling out that is because that's the genre more so that I've been participating in for the last decade or so. Um, certainly, if you're not familiar with my band, you know that. So it's obviously, that's the one that I'm exposed to the most. And there's so many individuals that don't know what the hell they're talking about, but because there's no pushback and they live in this echo chamber, um, they th assume that they're right. And even if you go to the publications that tend to cover this source of music, um, that's all, it's just that it's, again, we can't call it a lean. It's just they sit up on the left side of things. And it's like that with so many other genres as well, rap and, and, and all of that. It's the same deal where it's mainstream leftism and there is no sort of nobody pushing back for the most part. There are some outliers, like again, myself, for example, within that, that sort of metalcore, post hardcore genre. But for the most part, it's everybody leaning one way. Uh, again, well, I don't want to call it a leaning. It's not a lean. It's just, bam, they're sitting over there. They're not leaning that way. They're over there, right? So there's an example that I have for you. Now, Jared Alonji, the guy that I'm going to show you, um, I don't hate this guy by any means. I just I just have to point this out. Um, you may know him. He's done a lot of cool skits and stuff like that. They've been you know, pretty funny. Um talking about sort of the culture, metalcore culture and stuff like that. But also, this guy has, uh, he's in Crazy 88 band, which, you know, Lauren, who uh, is a friend of mine, she's also in that band. So let's just get into it. So this is a post that I came across. Somebody specifically tagged me in it, uh, Jared said. And he says, honestly, I have yet to see a woman or person of color get mad at me for being candid about gun reform. Literally every what about Chicago and guess we should ban knives too has been from some fragile white mid twenties meathead who more than likely drives a lifted F one fifty. So basically, what he's it's a it's, it's a white leftist signaling, um, which is you know you see this a lot self hating white people kind of uh, thinking that if they knock other white men um, you're gonna boost them up and 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 massage their ego, which unfortunately a lot of you clowns do, but. Imagine the echo chamber that you have to be in to to basically not experiencing anybody pushing back on this idea of further gun restrictions um, or gun laws or regulations or anything like that. Imagine the echo chamber that you have to be in when you see no women that are pushing back in that regards and no and basically non-white males. Ima imagine that. Imagine that that you the echo chamber that you have to be in that you see no non-white males pushing back in this regard. You have to be in one hell of an echo chamber, but that's sort of what we've set up, and certainly um, I'm going to speak on this a little more. So I responded to this, right? Here. I wouldn't call it mad, but if you are for more gun control, I take issue with that position, and I'm a person of color. Stupid-ass term. If you're referring to methods of gun control that target African-American communities or confiscate weapons in general, then no, I'm against that. That's a goalpost shift, by the way. Um, anyway, he says, are you against stricter background checks or allowing the CDC to research gun violence as a public health issue? Remind you, remind you, remind you that the CDC actually recently did research and the conclusion that they came up with isn't going to work out in his favor. Nonetheless, it's not a secret. And I say, no, I'm not for stricter background checks, whatever the hell that means. Uh, for reference, I'm against any gun control, be it in direct gun ban or status re regulation. That's my position. All gun laws are infringements. Now, instead of arguing against that point or anything like that, asking me why or anything, that's a ridiculous stance. This is what he says. That's a ridiculous stance. And with that, I assume you're a staunch libertarian. You don't have to assume that. I kind of had that shit in my bio. 
Uh, so we ought to end this before I further entrench you in such views. My original post was specific to conservative gun nut ideologies, but if you picked up on that, it might have saved you the energy. Now let's go scroll back up. There's nothing in here about conservative gun ideologies or anything like that. There's literally nothing in there. So for him to say that it's specific to that, that's he's literally lying in that regard. I say saying it's a ridiculous stance isn't an argument. Your post says nothing about conservatives, so it's not specific. It says, I have yet to see a woman or person of color get mad at me for being candid about gun reform. He says, I'm not trying to make an argument. I'm saying it's ridiculous because I think it's ridiculous. And I would rather get back to watching the office. And I said, and again, I'm saying, uh, well, I'm going to say, I'm saying it's not an argument because it's not an argument. It's basically you just plugging your ears and putting on the blinders, which is fine. Go watch the office. Now, I, I, there was another post that I said, um, I kind of in, in response to this as well. Um, but nonetheless, let's go to me. Basically, this guy's plugging in his ears, putting on a blindfold, yelling, la, 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 la. and that's it. He just doesn't want to have the conversation. And there was another post, and I cannot find it. Maybe I can search it real quick. Um, let me see. I don't know why why it doesn't pop up. Ah, here it is. This was the po This was the other one that I said because I couldn't type it all in those limited characters. I said, and because you seek to end conversations with, which is what he's trying to do, uh, end conversations with people on the opposite end of you, this would explain why you've yet to see a person of color against your gun reform position. You've created an echo chamber. And I think that's very important. I hope, which you probably won't, Jared comes across this, and I really challenge him as well as any other metalcore um, artist that I'm pretty sure yelling in his echo chamber with him, um, and just people that are fun, that, that are part of that culture to actually speak to people that are on the opposite end of them, of the conversation. They may learn something. The other person may learn something about their position. But these are tend to be so many of the individuals that want to pretend like they are knowledgeable, that want to pretend like they know things, and they are so quick to knock down anybody that says anything to the opposite of them. And then, like this guy, is having the nerve to say, well, I've yet to see somebody, a person of color or a woman say this. It's like, dude, you're literally knock. I, I, I'm right here and you're literally knocking me down um, and you don't want to have that conversation, which is fine. I'm not saying you're obligated to have this conversation by any means, but that's the reason why you don't get no pushback is because you're not even talking to people, bro. You're not talking to people. And this is the unfortunate thing about these echo chambers, even online, bro, people are so quick to you know block and, and all, all of this shit because they don't want to they want to i guess pretend it out of existence like there aren't women they're like there aren't persons of color that are like fuck gun control there's plenty of us around bro there's no shortage of us some of the lead voices among uh, gun enthusiasts like uh colin noir and, and, and my bud and my, uh, my story like what the fuck like what are you talking about bro but when you when you have the blinders on like that that's the conclusion that you come up with. And that, this goes back to my video when I was talking about why you don't see me ha in these roundtable discussions or panels that are either leftist or left-leaning publications or mediums. It's because they don't fucking invite me. This is why I show up on so many libertarian fellow libertarian, fellow anarchist platforms, even conservative platforms, because they at least say, hey, I want to speak to you. And I, I, I'm here before, I, in two hours, I, I'm on, I'm going to head over to uh, the studio to speak with, at the Blaze again, which I always tend to do, which is conservative. And I don't have to put a muzzle on or anything like that. I don't have to really filter my, my thoughts or anything. I say what I want we have a little argument. That's fine. It's whatever. Right. But they'll at least invite me. And this is why I tend to, from a mainstream perspective, tend to respect the, uh, the conservative, um, like media, right. 
more than I do the leftist media because they'll at least fucking have a conversation with somebody else for the most part. Even a lot of those guys may be you know, on the wrong side of the conversation in a lot of regards. But on the other side, it's like create they own all these forms of different media, and then they create these echo chambers. Now, I'm not saying that's what specifically what Jared has done, but he has. He's created an echo chamber for you to not get any fucking pushback. You have created an echo chamber to get any pushback in that regards. To act like it doesn't like it doesn't exist. And this is I remember I was talking about this on Rock Feed. Big shout out to Rock Feed. And we're talking about Corey Taylor, who doesn't really perform metal core, it's more just straight up metal. And uh he was talking about we were talking about how like, you know, he'll tweet some, you know, mainstream leftism or something, and there's no pushback, anything like that. And and I was we were we were talking about how, dude, I would love to sit and have conversations with these other artists about some of these subject matters. One, I know they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But you can get away with not knowing what the hell you're talking about when nobody disagrees with you, bro. <laughs> when nobody disagrees with you, you can get away with just saying some crazy shit that doesn't even make sense. You ain't got to prove it or nothing. It sounds good. But there's nobody that is... And I'm, I'm not saying you got to debate some guy that, like a professor or, or somebody that specifically studied this all the time. I'm talking about, dude, you can evade, like, there's colleagues that may exist among you, like, again, like myself, I'm an artist. These other people are artists. We can have this sort of discussion. But they don't want that. They want echo chambers, bro. And this is why we're in the situation that we're in. It has nothing to do with um, the fact that some of these individuals don't exist. It's because, unfortunately, social media has incentivized this. People want to put on the blinders. They want to plug their ears and they want to pretend that people that disagree with them are just wrong and and or they don't exist. Like you have the you have the position of everybody uh, else, any rational human being. You have that position. Everybody else is wrong even though there obviously exists other individuals who aren't insane that are simply on the other side of the situ situation. They can intellectually back it up why that is the position that they have. There's so many individuals that exist for you to utterly think that they don't or to create such an echo. I don't even have, I don't have that. Even me, when I post something like this about gun control, you best believe I got people that are going to be in my tweets on the opposite side. I don't even experience that. I don't experience that. Well, I can pop off something and then it's just like, what the hell is this fucking there? Like I can pop off something and then I'm just going to get no pushback. And this is why I'm so, we were talking about this on stream last night, why I'm always inviting people on my show that disagree. I don't invite people for the most part that agree, there's nothing, nothing to be had about that. People want to debate, I'll bring them on. I've had, I don't know, just in the last month, I've had so many, last couple of months, I've had so many people. I've had, I've debated nationalists, I've debated, um, you know, uh, staunch leftists, I've debated people on the other side of like the police in a military debate. Like, dude, I have no problem having conversations with people. For one, I have conviction of my beliefs, but I have no no problem discussing this. For one, I know what I'm talking about. If I fix my mouth to say something, I've studied it, which is why I stay in my lane in regards to certain subject matters. I don't go talking about shit just to feel like I got to be a part of the conversation. And unfortunately, that's what I think a lot of these guys do. They don't have anything. They, they don't know what they're talking about. Let's just be real with the shit. They don't know what the hell they are talking about. They have no idea what they're talking about, but they can, they can say something and it'll go relatively unchallenged because they've created an echo chamber. But that is not representative. It does not represent the reality of the situation. Certainly in regards to like what we're talking about here. And that was like, you know, gun control and guns. Like you best believe there are so many women and there are so many, basically there are so many people that aren't white and male that are on the opposite side of you on this for you to get no pushback. And then when you do get somebody that's saying, Hey man, I'm here. And and if you go and I'll go to it real quick, just so you see, because I retweeted about it. Obviously this guy got so many people like uh, my homies here that are saying like, dude, you know, we're women. We also, uh, 
we, we don't believe in the gun control um, bullshit, right? There's so many people that, that were saying that. But it just it just really highlights my point and certainly how a lot of these guys, they have no idea what they're talking about, but they're able to get away with it because this is where we're at with it. They're able to get away with it because that's just where we're at with it. People don't want to have conversations with individuals. And I'm not saying it's not, a, I'm not saying don't talk to people that agree with you. No, that's freaking stupid. And yes, your, your following on any form of social media, there's going to be people that gen, like, like you. But I certainly encourage people to get out there and speak to individuals. Don't just sit up there and block them. Don't sit up there and, and, and just not try to have a conversation because at that point you create an echo chamber and that, that echo chamber, that little bubble that you're sitting in does not represent reality. <laughs>